Respiratory failure is defined as an inability to provide adequate exchange of gases to support physiologic needs. What gases? Oxygen and carbon dioxide. So often, respiratory failure is categorized as hypoxemic or hypercarbic, also known as hypercapnic. And in hypoxemic respiratory failure, patients have a decrease in blood oxygenation, which we call hypoxemia, which we usually say starts when the arterial partial pressure of oxygen, which we write PaO2 with a little a, when the PaO2 is below 60 millimeters of mercury. And in contrast, patients with hypercapnic respiratory failure have an increase in the carbon dioxide in the blood, or hypercapnia. And we usually say that starts when the arterial partial pressure of carbon dioxide is greater than 45 millimeters of mercury. Many patients might have a combined condition when they have both hypoxemia and hypercarbia. Now there's some terminology here that can get confusing, so let's address it right away. So hypoxemia refers specifically to inadequate oxygenation of the blood, whereas hypoxia refers more generally to inadequacy of tissue oxygenation. Hypoxia can be generalized or regional, and generalized hypoxia is usually caused by significant hypoxemia because if the blood is short on oxygen, inevitably all the tissues will be too. But localized tissue hypoxia can occur without hypoxemia. It can occur with normal blood oxygen content, and that's why it's a little important to distinguish between hypoxia and hypoxemia. And this most commonly occurs when blood can't reach a certain tissue, which we call ischemia. And examples of this include hypoxia at the myocardium due to local ischemia, which is exactly what we see in an MI, mesenteric ischemia, or generally any state for which the local tissue demand for oxygen exceeds supply. Now, a third situation, which is even more rare, is when the tissues are unable to utilize oxygen despite normal levels of oxygen in the blood and tissues. An example of that is cyanide poisoning, which prevents cells from using oxygen by inhibiting the electron transport chain. And it's considered a kind of hypoxia, even though the partial pressure of oxygen in the tissues can be normal, because the end result is similar to hypoxia. Now, in general, the respiratory system takes in oxygen and gets rid of CO2. So when the respiratory system fails, you might expect hypoxemia and hypercarbia. And so you might therefore think that the same diseases cause both. And indeed, you might often have both at the same time. But because the details of gas exchange are different for O2 and CO2, this is not necessarily the case. You can have one without the other. And so in the following lessons, we're going to focus specifically on hypoxemic respiratory failure.